Rosewood Telecasters are cool. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. Last year, that's right, it took me a whole year to get this guitar, Fender came out with a new USA production line version of George Harrison's Telecaster, and the original $2,900 price tag quickly became five to 7000 Since then, the market has cooled off a little bit, so you can find them around that 4000 ish range. So let's finally take a look at this together. I'm actually lying, this is my second one. My first one was a new Guitar Day purchase, but I felt so bad that guy was waiting a year that I just went ahead and sent it on and just hoped that this other one that I had ordered for myself actually came in. Because let me tell you, I was definitely losing hope because they had only set out to make about a thousand of these things. So I've always been a big fan of Rosewood Telecasters just because they look cool, not necessarily because of the George Harrison Beatles influence, but this is the very famous guitar that he used on the rooftop sessions, the very last live concert as I understand it for the Beatles. And apparently his original one has a satin finish, I'm not entirely too sure about that, so that's what they paid tribute to on these, a complete satin finish over Rosewood, and I'm not a big fan of that personally. Most of the vintage original ones out there are full on gloss, but his being a prototype was a little bit special. The satin finish is nice to play, but I feel it doesn't bring out the color as much. Now this is not a Rosewood Stratocaster, even though those do exist in limited quantities. This one is a Walnut the Strat from the 80s. You can kind of see the same phenomenon going on here. When you get that full gloss finish, it really makes the color pop a little bit more. It's a nice glorious brown and it helps show off the Chateauian effect of the wood. Whereas over here in comparison, you just don't quite get as much to it. But that's the nice thing about satin finishes. They will eventually buff up just by natural playing. And for me personally, I always find satin rosewood necks to be very dry and uncomfortable feeling. But once you get past all that, it's just a beautiful looking telly here. We've got some great wood grain on this example. They definitely vary from streaky to wavy to not too much going on at all. But this one's a pretty nice example, I would say. Then we actually have a sandwich layer construction on these. You've got a slab of maple in between. Now Harrison's original is actually a full weight thing and that's why he only kept it for about a year. It was a gift from Fender and he just traded it on because it was way too heavy. So for this tribute run, I guess you could call it, they decided to chamber them out. I mean, this almost feels too light. And pairing that with the satin finish, honestly, the first time I pulled one of these things out of the case, I wasn't really all that impressed. I didn't see why people were paying crazy money. I mean, once you're paying such a premium on these, you might as well just get the Rosewood Custom Shop Telecasters that don't necessarily have the name attached to it if you're just looking to play one of these. But besides just the chambering, they also change like the fretboard radius. So it's not a one for one accurate rep. It's more so just meant to mimic the look, be a cool limited edition that you can add to your collection of all the other ones that they've done. For example, about a year prior, they did these Mexican Rockies that we documented in this episode. They're both Harrison guitars, so a lot of people wanted to pick these things up in sets without having to pay crazy, crazy custom shop money. I mean, the master built Rockies were ridiculously expensive, but I did document it for you guys that you can check it out in this episode. We didn't really get anything too special case wise. It's just your standard fender hard shell case. It's got the nice orange interior, but as far as case candy, it's just your regular hang tags over here. Your typical fender envelope zippered pouch. At least we do get the ashtray cover for the bridge. That's always fun, but your COA is just your basic paper one. Nothing too fancy. However, if we're being fair here, the fact that these were only $2,900 brand new and USA made, I think was a fan service enough, so I'm not necessarily too upset about not having a lot of case candy with these. So overall, kind of a cool release, but to learn a little bit more about it, let's go ahead and throw it on the workbench to take an individual look at its parts and specs. Inside this Rosewood Telecaster, I found a few very shocking things, but let's start with our first good shocking thing. This is a modder's dream Telecaster. Look what is underneath our pick guard here. It is a complete swimming pool route. Now, since this is a chambered body and they were trying to make it as light as humanly possible, that's probably why they went this way. But that means you could have a lot of fun modifying this one. You just have to put a different pick guard on it and maybe mess with your wiring and whatnot. So although I wouldn't necessarily recommend modifying this particular model, it is a good option for you. But these are pure vintage 64 Telecaster pickups. They don't really have any two distinctive markings except for their construction. Here's what that bridge pickup one looks like. It does have 64 on it. And you can see another barcode sticker right here. But our pickups within the circuit read 5.97k ohms in our bridge. Our neck is 7.13. And just for fun together, they're 3.29.
But our stickers tell us it's the George Harrison telly, so you should be looking for that if you're buying one of these. And now instead of signatures, I guess they just have sign-off stickers for Apollo Gonzalez. But the truss rod's really easy to access on this model. You just might be able to get it normally, but since the pickup doesn't mount to the guard, you can easily remove it to get to it. But this barcode actually has the date of production as mid-November 2022. That's right, that's further proof that shows you just how long it took for them to make all the ones that they wanted to do. But seeing the bridge pickup cavity for the first time threw me for a loop. What's with this white wood right here that we're seeing in the cavity? Is Fender really using like rosewood veneers? But no, then it hit me. That is the maple layer. And this wiring route just happens to occur right on that plane so you can see it. So I thought that was pretty fascinating. Another area that you can see a large portion of the maple center. I'm loving the wood grain on this example. Nice, long, and streaky. That's what I look for in these rosewood top guitars. Got kind of an interesting area right here that's normally pretty well covered by our pick guard. But look at the pick guard screw holes. They're like domed out before they go in. And some of them look like they filled them in, but others are a little bit cleaner. And as far as intonation and action, you have these steel barrel saddles, one for each set of strings. And as far as our electronics, just your three-way blade switch with your pilgrim hat topper and two knurled knobs for volume and tone. No fancy in and out of phase or anything like that, just standard pots. That appear to be 250K and everything is cloth wired in this. So that is considered a premium spec here. But now let's dive into the chambered body. Which I don't know about you guys, I'm kind of excited to see what might be in here. So this is looking towards the cutaway area. You can actually see a lot of glue residue where the maple and rose would join together. It's very close quarters in here, so we can't really see too much, but you can just see the cutaway right there. I was kind of expecting to see something a little bit cleaner looking than that. Over here, we're looking at the output jack. It looks like they do indeed leave you a little bit more meat right there. That way you don't have any cracking on the side, so that's always good to see. Just like right here, that's where the screw goes through to secure the plate to the top so they leave a little bit more of a wooden tab right there. Same thing is true over here on the other side. But now looking towards the bridge, this appears to be constructed very similar to like a chambered out custom shop Les Paul. So they still have this extra little bump down here for our strap button. And then you have like the center block right here, but then they carve that away. So when we finally do make it over to the other side, we actually see some really weird stick figures down here. Now that I think about it, I fully understand what all this stuff is. The chambered body must make it hard for the pick guard screws to fully secure. So that's why they put these little wooden dowels in some of them. But what's funny is they didn't actually cut them off on the inside, mainly because uh, there's not really a good way for them to do that. So yes, indeed, it does have a chamber going from here all around with an additional chamber there. So that definitely explains why it's a pretty lightweight guitar. Speaking of the hole grip problems, yeah, this screw doesn't even go back in. There's nothing for it to grip to. So you remember that big chunk of wood that fell out of that 335? I knew I saved this little thing for a reason. That came in handy to at least give it something to grip into. So there's a little bit of Gibson inside this fender. Well, that was fun. Let's check out our neck. So this is a rosewood fretboard on top of a rosewood neck. It is not all one piece. Although just quickly looking at the side, depending on your viewing angle, you might think it is just one piece. But if you get it in the light just right, you can see the fretboard on top of the neck. I really dig the side marker inlays though. They look like real mother of pearl, but I'm sure they're just pearloid just like the top inlays are. It just looks so good in contrast to the dark rosewood neck. And you've got 21 frets. But they went for a nine and a half inch fretboard radius on these just to make it a little bit more modernized. And it still has that 25 and a half inch scale length with a nut width of 1.65 inches. That increases to 2.05 by the 12th. They first fret neck depth of 0.86 and it chunks up to 1.01 by the 12th. Here's what that neck profile looks like at the first fret and the 12th fret. Nice and rounded. Fender's website calls it the late 60s C neck. But this next thing, my friends, uh, it's really unfortunate it left the factory this way. So I was conditioning the fretboard and I noticed there was some Sharpie on the nut. So I was ready to just throw this guitar away. It's worthless. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I was just like, okay, it, it happens. Probably part of the nut cut process. But what is unforgivable here is it's not just on the nut. It's literally on the guitar itself. And I'm sure there is a product you could use to clean that off. 
but you're going to risk either removing the finish with it or buffing it up to the point where it doesn't match the rest of the guitar. So that is unfortunate because the first one I got for my new Guitar Day purchaser, it actually had a complete buffed up area down here, stocked from the factory like it had rubbed against something. So I have yet to get a perfect one of these. So that was a bit of a letdown, but here's a good section where you can see the fretboard match onto the neck. You can see the different wood grain right there. As far as the rest of the headstock, it looks okay. Vintage style tuners, poke down, wrapped around style, string tree, and your typical Fender decal. That's just the way they look in Fender territory. Moving on to the back, it looks pretty similar to the front with nice wood grain going on. But I really like the side profile shot. The two pieces line up surprisingly well. It almost just looks like a continuation of the exact same piece, but it's not quite, as you can tell by the other areas. But this back piece actually has a lot of like redness to it. There's also like a splotch of yellow right here. I'm gonna blacklight that to see if it looks any different because maybe Fender actually stained that or it's just natural coloration within the wood. But there you can see your string through ferrules. You've got your special George Harrison ohm neck plate and we'll take a look around the edges. So again, you can see the maple center seam. Then our cool rosewood neck and headstock with matching F stamp tuners. Under black light, nope, nothing too special. So that definitely tells you that coloration is within the wood. Back of the neck has the same glow. Being a brand new guitar, this isn't gonna show us too much. But you can see the windings around the bridge pickup. And of course, can you guess what this is? Yeah, it's the Rocky guitar. It's meant to do that. All said and done, it's seven pounds, eight ounces. Let's go ahead, plug this in and hear how it sounds. First impressions, not really digging the tones out of this one. Very thin, I mean, I get it, they're single coils and it's been a while since I played a Fender, but. It's just a bit too spanky for my liking. It's not quite deep enough. That's a nice tone. touch sensitive. I mean, this neck pickup hardly distorts at all. There's that bridge.
Now that we know all about the 2022 George Harrison Rosewood Signature Telecaster, what are my final thoughts on this one? Honestly, I, I bought this one for my personal collection, right? I, I wanted to keep it because I just love Rosewood Tellies, but this is just not the guitar for me. Maybe it needs a setup and then it would be a little bit better, but at the end of the day, I just prefer the gloss finish on guitars like these because they look better and that's always what I had in my head. I will say though that actually playing this, I don't quite get that dry hand feeling as I've had on other Rosewood neck guitars. It's actually quite a nice finish to play, especially on the forearm. It's so effortless and smooth right here. So it is good in that aspect if that's what you're looking for. But for me personally, didn't like the pickups for the style of music I try to play. But then again, if you're trying to play Beatles stuff, these would probably be just fine. They're probably more well suited towards that. So it's probably more so on me why I didn't like this guitar, but I had an awesome time checking it out. I love the wood grain on it. And I hope you enjoyed seeing this video after such a very long wait. All right, troglodytes, uh, I guess, unfortunately, if you're interested in being the next owner of this one, I'll throw it on my website for the current market value, and I guess I'll buy another Les Paul. <laughs> or do I buy a true 60s vintage one? All right, we'll catch you guys tomorrow. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.